Hello YouTube, this is Bob's Comics coming at you with a quick comic haul. Uh, actually, these are all books that I got from mycomicshop.com. Some were in auction and some were in um, uh, uh, buy it nows. So, and then some were actually uh, best offers. So, Justice League, baby. Woohoo! Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> all right, so let's make me small and get to the haul. We're going to start off this morning with some Frank Cho goodness. Uh, you guys know Frank Cho is probably in my top five uh, artists, especially for Good Girl. So, well, really just for Good Girl art, right? So we're going to start off actually with a trade. Uh, I kind of got interested in some Liberty Meadows. Somebody had um, recommended to me that I check out Liberty Meadows, which was uh, Frank Cho's comic strip that he did uh, in a newspaper. And then they got collected into uh, volumes and into individual comics. And I've always really liked comic strips in comics. Like, I like the way that that reads out. I like that I can pick it up, read a couple of pages, and put it down because I'm a busy man. So, <laughs> first off, we have starting in the, in the the with the last volume is number four. But I, I like these because they include um, new art on the covers generally. So, I really enjoy that. I think that's just fantastic. I guess this girl's name is Jen probably Jennifer look at that isn't that isn't that great so this has the um, you know comic strip and it. it's all black and white of course it's a newspaper and then it also has the cover gallery where they show all the you know some sketch work and the covers from the other books so take a look at that isn't that cool you'll be seeing that again in a second so good stuff Frank Cho's Liberty Meadows. I think there's four of these soft covers. I think they also made some hard covers too. Um, and there's some other renditions and variations on the covers, but I like this set. So I'm gonna collect this set and uh, I'm working on like a bookcase over there for that for that corner over there. And so uh, when that gets all put together, it's gonna have a lot of trades and things of that nature and some records and things like that. Uh, so keeping the Liberty Meadows train going, we've got number 35, probably my favorite cover. I just love that. I almost got one that was signed at the bottom. I was this close, but it kind of interrupted this part, and I kind of liked her little slippers. I thought they were cute, so I didn't want to mess that up. And he signed it in red, and it was all over the bottom. And I already have some Frank Cho signed stuff, so I didn't have to have... wasn't like I was clamoring for a Frank Cho signature, right? Uh, let's see where we're at. I want to make sure we keep it tight today. Three minutes. All right. Liberty Meadows, number 36. So these are two of some of the final issues. I think they only go up to like 37 or 38. So very cool. Love that. Just good stuff. And now this one, you have to have to put the kitties to bed. But uh, here is Frank uh, Frank Cho's Jungle Girl season two, and this is the uh, risque cover for number four. It's Frank Cho. Sorry about the blue tape, everybody, but this one really does uh, show the full Monty there, so we can't have that going on. Uh, so you see she's battling the guys in the background. She's hiding behind the rock. Very cool. So now there's a regular version of this that's colored, and she's got, you know, something on, I think. Or this is obscured in some way. So, of course, I don't have that one. So moving on to a slightly different art style. Still some good girl, though. We got uh, The Adventures of the Mask by Bruce Tim. This is number four. And look at that. <laughs> I think I picked this up for like a buck or two bucks. And anytime you can get uh, Bruce Tim art for a couple bucks, you kind of have to do it. So, I mean, you, I would say you can't beat it, but I, you could probably beat some Bruce Tim. But uh, it's a very distinct style, and uh, you don't have to like it. But if you ever get into the point where you really do like it, you're going to end up with more of it. So <laughs> be careful. Uh, this one's David Nakanyama. Uh, all New Ultimates, number four. So, And this just has a bevy of Marvel beauties on it. Uh, kind of a cartoony style, very plasticky. They look like they're all wrapped in cellophane. Uh, but I guess they're supposed to be sweating in the sun. So, kind of cool. Um, don't know if I'm going to keep that one. I probably shouldn't have picked it up at all. But, you know, for a couple bucks, I couldn't leave it behind. I went ahead and got it. Uh, working on these bombshells. Uh, Superman number 43. I don't like them all. So, in this 
thing that I've been doing and calling the collection and everything, it, I get down to a point where I start looking at things just a little bit differently. And when I see a comic cover like this, I'm like, I really like this. So what else is there by that uh, style or what else is there in that grouping? And uh, so when I looked at all the other bombshell variants, this is one of those DC bombshell variant covers. Um, I just don't like them all, but I really like maybe five or six of them, but I think there's like 20 and I just don't like them all. So, uh, so I'm just going to pick up the ones that I like. And it's hard because as a former completist or someone that that's been through that, like I have, you, you kind of really feel like you need to, you need to get them all. You need to have the complete set, but it's a very short lived feeling once you complete that set of, of accomplishment. And then unless it's like a major set, like you have all the Hulk, you know, and, and a small set, like the first six Hulk or something, you know, if you've got that, then maybe that's something you throw up every now and then like, Hey, I have that whole set, man. You know, that's cool. But for the most part, if I was like, Hey, I have every bombshell variant, people are like, are they all good? I'm like, no. Um, all right. What an accomplishment. <laughs> and so that's my little tip for, uh, fighting the urge to be a completionist. I guess that'll make it in the description. Uh, Green Lantern number 32. This is uh, Ferris Air. Look at that. I love that purple. It's so good. You got to assume this is kind of a Starfire type cover. I don't know if that's supposed to be uh, what's her name Starfire, but sure looks good. Uh, here's a, a Phil Noto Star Wars Shattered Empire. I know everybody going crazy over Star Wars for some reason, but <clears throat> I actually um, don't like all the covers for Star Wars, believe it or not, and I don't think most people did. It's just one of those, you know, on fire properties right now, which is funny because I remember just a few years back, uh, several people would say, "Hey, buy Star Wars. It's it's never it'll it'll always come back again. It's a classic property. Just never never discount." And I know a lot of people who just stocked up on Star Wars for years. Well, there was no value in them, hardly. And now, all of a sudden, they've kind of come back around and uh, and everyone's hot on it again. So, I got to tell you, Mandalorian is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, we got a new sound system at home. And uh, we already have, you know, a nice big, you know, 4K screen in the living room. And this weekend, I put in a new, a new um, you know, wireless digital sound system. And the thing just shakes the ceiling up. And one of the first things I did was put on Mandalorian in 4K. And it was just like rocking the walls, man. It was so good. And uh, and just, we really, my wife and I were sitting there. We just started watching it. And we were really getting right back into it. We are like, yeah, this show is so good. It was so good from the beginning. So uh, just fantastic stuff. And it reminded us, too, because... You know, chance. I don't know if the spec on Baby Yoda, if it's if it's if he's coming back into the show or whatever. But what was nice was that first episode was so good, and Baby Yoda's not in it at all. So it's like, hey, you know, they they can definitely hold a show without the the child. So there you go, Star Wars Shattered Empire Phil Noto covers. I've got quite a few of these Phil Noto covers. I kind of like the the way that he does the old cast. So. Witchblade, Tomb Raider, one half with the Dynamic Forces uh, limited uh, to 7,500 copies. Only 7,500 copies of this book out there. So congratulations to anyone who managed to catch one of these. I might pick up two. Maybe if I'm going to start big balling like that. So <laughs> probably not. Uh, so Witchblade, Tomb Raider, one half. I don't know if this completes my Witchblade, Tomb Raider, one half collection. But I think I have about five of them of the variant covers i mean if you want to start blaming marvel uh for all their variants you got to look back to top cow man those guys did it right they had about eight nine covers per so for an entire run just every issue they just didn't care just putting them out there even a one half there's uh, there's literally five or six of those and i think i might have them all by now all with coas about how limited they are okay uh danger girl number three adam hughes ah so you see it says um filled to the brim with danger you see the little danger girl belt buckle that's cool and then she goes oh which of course is the adam hughes insignia so very cool i just liked i guess it's bondage i don't know i don't really look at it like that but i think it's pretty cool so uh pick that up for just a couple of bucks all right we're right on schedule uh cave woman odyssey number juan uh i just couldn't pass that up it just looked too good 
I've had uh, a few of these over the years, these Cave One Odyssey books, but this this might be one of my favorite Butterroot covers of all, especially one that is fully clothed. So uh, I just absolutely love that. I think it's cute. The dinosaur looks killer. Absolutely killer. Oh, man, does that look good. All right. Uh, Vampirella, number two. Actually, you know what? I may have mixed up a couple of these. I did. Uh, no, I didn't. No, we're still on. All right. Vampirella, Death and Destruction, number two. Adam Hughes cover. A little butch for me, but we'll get past it. It's still old classic Adam Hughes. I guess it's bondage. Got some good skull action there. And you see a more buffed up Vampirella. Which I kind of think is cool when they take, you know, Red Sonia or Vampirella and buff them up a little bit. But I like my She Hulk a little slender. That's just how it is. All right. Uh, Secret Wars number six. This is the, the um, old Tyler Christopher, or whatever his name is, cover. Um, I almost have a complete run of this. I'm only missing one of them. And I think it's the Iron Man, which is maybe number nine, if I'm not mistaken. So, But I'm going to finish the run of these because I have, I'm have. i also working on collecting the original toys. Some of them I have from when I was a kid, but I, I don't have some of them. I think some of them are my brothers. So so I'm working on, a, on the original run of the toys, and I have a display over top. Uh, you obviously can't see it in the video, but I have a display where I have all Funko covers, uh, variants, and Funko Pops in front of them. And at some point, when I finish this collection, I'm going to swap that out. And I'm going to put, uh, which, who knows what I'll do with all those Funko Pops. But I'll put uh, all these variant covers with their corresponding uh, figures. So that'll be cool. Oh, Frank Cho sneaking back in here. We got Marvel Knights number 13, uh, Fantastic Four. I think it was just four, though, but whatever. Um, number 13, Frank Cho giving you that same... Uh, shot there semi translucent you can see where he put the color is kind of halfway there but then not really there can you see that it's like there you go so he put it like that and then it kind of phases up to full color so i thought y'all might enjoy that all right uh i think that could well should i give you a couple a couple of the big bombs here at the end for those of you who are kind enough to stay to the end, here's a couple of big boy books. Boom. Showcase number 17, first appearance of Adam Strange. Check that out. Oh, you got to love it. So good. So good. I didn't think I was going to get this one. Won this one in auction. I th it was tight. I, th I didn't think I'd get it for the price at my max bid, but I picked it up, scored it. It's not a great copy. It leaves a lot to be desired, but hey, it's the first appearance of a major character for DC. And uh, Silver Age first appearances, I think, are, are pretty much where it's at right now. Golden Age is getting up there. Uh, people are already skipping over some Silver Age and going right to Bronze, which is always going to be good too. But there's a lot less first good first appearances in the Bronze Age. There's only just a handful on either side of the table. Whereas Silver Age first appearance, especially DC, I think is an undervalued category right now. And uh, and it won't stay that way for long because everything's getting pulled up with the current market. So my suggestion is pick up as many Silver you know, even low grade doesn't matter. So m low to mid grade Silver Age keys, I think are, are a solid investment right now. So that's where I'm at. And then look at the color on this, you guys. Holy moly. Planet Comics number 29, maybe my best colored book uh, in the run so far. You guys know I've been working on this run. I mean, that color is just amazing. Look at how rich that blue is up there. And the dragon is just the greens and her hair is still orange and fire red. It's not washed out at all in the blues. I mean, this thing is just super sharp color. One of the best colored ones I've ever had for sure for this run. And I think, I think it takes the cake. I have one other book that's really, really well presenting color like that. Um, but it has less colors. So this having so many different colors in it, it's just super dynamic. So that's my haul. Still working on these. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. We'll catch you next time on Bub's Comics. Remember to read a comic and don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye. <laughs>